Welcome to the Top Advisor Marketing Podcast brought to you by Proudmouth. I'm your host, Matt Halloran. Being your own loud is not new to marketing, but the mindset, strategies, and resources to help you get there are evolving faster than this industry is keeping up. It is time to find a new perspective on what works why and how to move your business forward. Listen as I interview guests to help you learn from them how to be your own loud. Let's get to the show. As Financial Literacy Month wraps up, we're releasing a very special episode featuring Brian Ursu, a certified financial planner and the author of the book, Now What? A Practical Guide to Figuring Out Your Financial Future. Now, many things have changed since we recorded this episode. Like, we're no longer in a pandemic, but we, as an industry, are seeing the importance of communication, education, and relationship building with the next generation. You know, $74 trillion is on the line. So many of us, including your clients' adult children, were just never educated in financial planning or sustainable wealth management. Brian's book bridges that gap with super practical advice for anyone dealing with fiscal change, like a first paycheck or a sudden windfall of money. If you're an advisor who's thinking about the great wealth transfer and you're passionate about helping younger generations make more informed financial decisions, you're going to love this show. Enjoy! Hello and welcome to another Top Advisor Marketing Podcast. About 10 years ago, I was introduced to somebody when I worked for Ron Carson at Peak and all of my fellow coaches said, this is a guy who does something fundamentally unique and different and does it right. And so I had an opportunity to meet Brian and uh, we, we shared some uh, phone calls together and I've been following his career and I just found out that he wrote a book, and the book that he wrote is the biggest, most pressing question that we hear from advisors and have for the last 15 years. So our guest today, Brian Urzu, he is the author of Now What? A Practical Guide to Figuring Out Your Financial Future and the President of Intentional Wealth Advisors. Today, we're going to talk about the book how you can utilize some of the systems in the book and what he's learned about keeping next gen money. Brian, welcome to the show. Thanks, Matt. It was a nice introduction. Well, thanks, man. I, I, uh, you know, we're fellow Michiganders, uh, even though you live in a place that is literally one of the most beautiful places, uh, in, in ranked one of the most beautiful places in, in Michigan consistently. So, you know, I've had an affinity towards your practice. But the other thing is, is when we met a long time ago, one of the things that you did very differently was you had a real niche. You had a real focus with your practice. So if you don't mind, before we jump into the book, let's set the stage a little bit here because, you know, you're not a spring chicken in this, brother. You've been doing this for a long time. Where did all of this begin? Uh, so yeah, 32 years I've been doing this and it was actually through the coaching I got at Carson and, and Peak to see that there were two distinct paths that you could take your career on. And one was on uh, just increasing production and gaining client and, and, uh, and growing your practice that way. The other was creating a lifestyle that was sustainable and enjoyable. And I chose the latter and it's made all the difference literally. And nothing against the other strategy. It's just that this is what works for me. I want to love coming to work. I want to love my clients. I want to love and have time for my family. And so that's that's kind of the practice that we've designed and set up. I'm incredibly proud of you. And that's going to sound corny. And, and you know, you can take that for whatever level of corn you want. But everybody... One of the things that happens the longer you've been in this business, and, and so Brian goes to a lot of conferences, I've gone to a lot of conferences, and one of the things that we see all the time is advisors who chase wealth for their younger years and really expend so much energy, and then they have to spend all of that wealth in order to maintain kind of a crappy quality of, quality of life later on. Most advisors who have chosen the, the Brian path, this lifestyle path, one really do love the opportunity to come to work and love their clients, like Brian said, but also it gives them the mental space to come up with what we're going to really focus on today, which is the book. So Brian, dude, I've written two books. My wife told me if I ever wrote another book again, she's going to kill me. How was the process? And let's talk about the book itself. Okay. So the, the process of writing, I loved, that is my jam. So 
I would set the alarm and this sounds, this sounds horrible and not very fun. I'd set the alarm for 40, 445. And I'd make myself a cup of coffee. I'd sit in the stillness of our living room with the, the wood stove going. And in that silence, I would write for an hour and a half and then, you know, get ready and start my day. So I didn't steal time from clients or from my profession. So I was at work at seven or seven 30 every morning and, and worked until uh, four. So it was great. And I really enjoyed uh, that quiet time. And it was time to think. And the book kind of, it sounds too easy, but it kind of wrote itself in terms of as I was coming up with what would I want this book to entail, I realized there was so much that I've learned over the 32 years that I have never shared with my own grown children. And so I was motivated by what would be the things that, that I would want my own kids to know about setting themselves up for uh, financial security. And that kind of caused me to write the, the outline and then it, it just came together. So that's the foundation of this book, right? The foundation of this book is having those conversations or teaching this next generation to make wise financial decisions that will impact their financial future. Is that a good summary? It is a good summary, but really the, the genesis of that was our daughter graduated from college and went from being a poverty level student eating ramen noodles to getting a job as a software engineer in Silicon Valley. And the job offer was seven pages long. Most of the, the terms used in that job offer, she didn't understand. So I had to first help her understand that and know how to take advantage of the benefits. And then she said, you know, what, what should I read? What how should I know how to handle this? And I gave her the normal books that I would recommend. And she did read them, but then she came back and said, you know, those are for people that are much older and much further along in their career. You're a good writer. You should write the book. And that's when, you know, I did what any good dad would do. I decided to write the book. <laughs> and, and, and this is, the, this is the, the fruit of that. Nice. Your daughter throws the gauntlet down. You pick the darn thing up and start writing. That's freaking awesome. Okay. Now to use this. Okay. Uh, let, let's take a, the, let's take a step back. So, so we understand the onus for you writing the book. What is the ultimate goal? I mean, so keeping money uh, as a financial services professional and, and really, truly it's, it's much past the assets. It's being looked at as the family's advisor is something you've successfully done or how successfully do you think you've done that before you had this uh, thought solidified with the book? Yeah, and this, this may be not the best answer, but it's the honest answer. The more I researched uh, this group, and the, the group is millennials and Gen Z, the more I realized they are such a dynamic generation uh, with so much promise and they're going to do things differently than previous generations, but they don't have the skill set. They're not financially literate through no fault of their own. So nobody taught them this. And they need to be empowered to move forward, to really take advantage of everything that they're going to be going through. And so that was really the genesis. And I wasn't like, I should write a book for millennials so I can get a lot of millennial clients. That wasn't the goal. My goal, honestly, was to try to help uh, people and, and reach this generation. And the benefit of that is most of my clients are probably in their 50s or 60s. They have adult grown children and they have no shortage of guilt over how ill prepared their own adult children are. And so this is really for my clients It's kind of a lifeline to toss to their adult children to say, hey, I didn't necessarily teach you everything you should should know, but this book contains much of it. Let's talk about the practical application. So, so the, the book has been published. It is out. It is something that people can purchase. And we're going to talk about that uh, closer to the end of the podcast. How have you used this book in your practice? Have you been giving it out? What's the feedback you've been giving? Help us with that. So I have been giving it out. So each of my clients will receive a copy of the book. And then we, we've also, um, we did a couple book signings, but it was just before COVID when this was released. And so those were, those were canceled, but I've reached out to my network of uh, financial advisors, many of whom, you know, that 
also care about their clients and uh, talk to them and, and sent them a copy of the book for them to preview, uh, review and then see if they wanted to use it in their practice. And so we found a number of financial advisors buying multiple copies, 20, 30 copies to give to their adult uh, children of, of their clients. What are some of the biggest takeaways? So one of the great things about this podcast that we try to provide great value for our listeners, when they get done listening to the podcast, there are things that they can do immediately, Brian, like, okay, I can do this. I can ask this question. I can implement this in my practice. What are some of the things that are included in the book or some of the things that you've learned through the feedback or in writing the book that you're like, man, I think if advisors said this or did this as just kind of a primer would help begin the conversation, lead into the book and, and really start helping your clients and most of our clients, kids and grandchildren make better financial decisions. Yeah, I, I've had a, an accountability partner, uh, you know him, and we, we talk every day uh, at four o'clock and hold each other accountable in our, our practice and what, they're do, what we're doing and, and what our objectives are and our goals. And we've been doing this for 10 years and we've developed quite a relationship. And one of the things that he said to me several years ago is if you want to do something nice for your client, do what you can to help their children, right? If you give your client, client's child a gift, you know, they, they get accepted into Northwestern University, you send them a, t a sweatshirt of the university, that goes much farther than anything that you can do for your client. Do something nice for your clients or your best friend's children, and you've got a friend for life. And so that really stuck with me. And so I, I feel like this book hits that mark in terms of telling your best clients, I think you're important, so important that I want your kids to have this book and then send it to them. Yeah. Opening up that conversation has always been something that I think advisors want the tools to, to have those conversations. How do you begin these conversations? How, how do you have a conversation? Is it just handing them the book? I mean, at, at one point, Brian, you, you didn't have the book. So how did you begin these conversations in offering to, well, maybe educate their children or provide them with resources just so that you are starting to be looked at a little bit more as the family's advisor? That's a great question. And I really hadn't connected the dots until you've asked it. But one of the things that we've, we started doing maybe four or five years ago is going to our best clients and saying, listen, we're in the same boat. Our kids are about the same age. Uh, there's a lot that they don't know. I would like to offer the opportunity to have a family meeting with you and your children or just your children. You decide whether you want to be present or not. And we've got a large conference area that's got living room furniture and we've got great coffee. And so if they thought that was a good idea, then we would invite their children and their children's significant others to come in and we would just chat. And it would be very, very casual, very informal, no specific agenda, no PowerPoint. Let's answer the questions that you have. And then these are the things I think you should know. And these are the things that you should focus on uh, moving forward. And in each of those cases, we asked our, our client, number one, do you want to be present? And number two, if you're not present, what kinds of messages would you want us to cover? And then we would include that. And it's something about getting, getting advice from your parent versus getting your advice from somebody else. It's totally different, right? So we're used to discounting the advice we got from our parents. And they could tell, I could tell them the same thing that their parents told them, but it means something more when it's coming from me. And so those were great meetings. And we continue to have those actually with those uh, same adult children. And, and I think I, I want to pause and just have everybody make sure that that sinks in. It's just the, the wonderful ask that permission that you're seeking to have this conversation. And I love, Brian, You, how many years have you been doing this? 30 what? 32. 32, right? 
your kids, I mean, if you sat down with your kids and really started talking to them about, you know, stocks, bonds, mutual funds, saving, blah, 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 they, they probably, oh, you're dead again. You know, it's like Will Smith, a, a great actor and musician and all of that stuff. His kids don't listen to him about stuff and he's freaking right. Will Smith. So having the opportunity to have somebody else come in who your parents endorse as an expert, I used a bad word there, but you know what I mean? Say, hey, you know what? Brian really knows what he's doing. We'd love for you to listen to him. He's been our advisor for a long time. He's one of the reasons why we're able to retire, right? I mean, that really does, you know, put you in a really nice light. And I love that you added something there. And I don't know if everybody heard this, but you also asked the matriarch and the patriarch or the parents what messages you wanted to pass on. And I think there can be a huge connection point there, whether they want to pass on values, whether they want to pass on their story whether they want to pass on some of their wishes after they're gone. Have you had those conversations or did any of those things happen? We've had all of those conversations and more. We've had meetings with just the adult children, no parents there. And we've had them with the whole family. We've had them with the family, the parents and friends. It's really, really very cool. And, you know, when we do that, when it's mixed company, parents and kids, I always ask before the meeting, the parents, where are the boundaries? Are we opening up the full kimono? Do they need to know everything? Or where do you want those boundaries to be? Because we don't have to disclose a net worth statement. But if you're, if you're open, we can do that. And so that was also very important before we have those meetings to not reveal something that they didn't want revealed. In my previous life, <clears throat> I had a family meeting with an estate planning attorney who's also a financial advisor. And we had uh, grandma and grandpa in the room and uh, kids and grandkids. And uh, we didn't talk about finances per se, but what we did was we had a family meeting talking about their values and uh, what sort of wisdom that grandma and grandpa wanted to pass down to their kids. And I remember being about 15 minutes into the into the thing. And it was weird because like they didn't know me. So, Brian, I, I wasn't in your position. I had no relationship with these people whatsoever. So I had to build it rather quickly. But after I'd asked a couple of questions and got everybody warmed up, I remember grandma crying. And uh, I warned my financial advisor that I was working with that this was probably going to happen. The emotions were going to be present, and I was really, really okay with it. But when she started crying, everybody in the room, everybody gets all uncomfortable. And I'm like, no, everybody, just hold on a second. And so she got done crying, and she looked at her family, and she said, I have never told anybody what I just shared with you. Because wow. nobody's ever asked me those questions in a in an in an area or uh, in a situation where I feel that I could answer. Now, here's the crazy thing: is the advisor that I did it for ended up picking up I don't know three million dollars in assets within the last next week because he got the kids and the grandkids as clients, and that's really like the unintended magnificent outcome of having these deep meaningful relationships is you are looked at as the advisor for the whole family and you can make a big big difference now with all of that said writing a book is is a painful and you said it's your jam it's a great process it's wonderfully cathartic it makes you think about absolutely everything have you given this book to other financial services professionals? And have you gotten any feedback from them about the book or about how they're planning on using it within their practice? Yeah, I, I have. I, I sent it to probably 20 friends. Uh, I sent a copy to, to each of them. There are also financial advisors. And these are people very similar to me in terms of their values and, and how they care for their clients. So I knew it was in good hands. And there were several of them that immediately called and thanked me. And there were several that it took a while to get back to me because we were going through the financial crisis of uh, the coronavirus. Uh, but when they did, they said, I love this book and I am getting uh, multiple copies to give to my clients. And one, in fact, is a friend of mine who is a financial advisor in the same in Traverse City, and he has three children. He bought, he bought one for each of his three children and he's, he's a peer. And he said, this is what, what I should have told you. And Brian speaks for me. And it was really very, very flattering that he said it that way and, and presented it that way. And, and so those were high honors uh, indeed. Yeah. Now, is there 
bigger picture stuff here. So you have a book, right? Are you planning on creating a course? Are you planning on creating a coaching program? How are you going to maybe support financial advisors who want to have this sort of relationship because there isn't a lot of stuff out there like this that seems to resonate so clearly with your peers? I, I don't have that thought out as thoroughly as I probably should have. And and I'm using the, the pandemic as, as an excuse. I have reached out to a couple large employer groups and I'm in the process of putting together uh, webinars and sessions for their millennial employees and going over the content of the book. That's been great. Uh, and it's been a lot of fun and received very, very well by that audience. But in a bigger picture, getting it to financial advisors, I, I would hope to have some kind of a, an outlet, whether it's a presentation at a conference or a breakout at a conference. And the real issue is not necessarily me trying to sell books. The real issue is providing a tool for financial advisors to shore up their book of business and ensure that they're going to maintain and retain uh, next gen clients. The goal is not to go out, as I mentioned, to get a bunch of millennial clients, but what I've learned from by having my, my practice valued every year for the last 15 years is bringing the average age of the client base down increases the value of the book. And so by gaining millennials, and it's usually the children of our clients, we're bringing the average age down, which is increasing the value of the book and we're retaining those assets. So that whole 80% of the time the money leaves when, when the matriarch or patriarch leaves, uh, we've reversed that. And it's less than really 20% mm. that we're seeing uh, leave. And, and so we're retaining those relationships many times for multiple generations. Well, that alone should make people want to uh, find out a little bit more about the book, find out more about how they can use the book. I would love it if you did take, and yes, I think times have been a little bit strange in the last, well, I don't know, whatever, nine months of this freaking year. So it'd be really great for you to have some some extra resources. I'm glad that that's something that, that you're at least consciously working on and, and, and will get out there here in the near future. Uh, maybe even by the time this podcast airs, you'll have a couple of those things done. And as we wrap up today, if you had one piece of advice, right, for newer advisors or, or people who are trying to maintain multi-generational relationships with their clients uh, and their clients' entire families, what, what piece of advice would you give? I, I mean, Matt, I, I, I'd have to say you have to be authentic, be sincere, truly care. Just like the example that you gave of the, the grandmother the goal wasn't to poke her to get an emotional response to get this money from the kids and grandkids. That wasn't the goal. The goal was to really explore what her values are and share that with the rest of the family. That was the goal. And it's because you cared and the financial advisor cared that you set that up. The consequence of that was resulting in, in business. And so if you truly care about people, the clients, their kids, the people that are most important to them, then you will be rewarded. The law of the universe, it, it may be a matter of time, uh, but it will happen. The other thing that I would share, Matt, that I've shared, you know, I've done a lot of these podcasts, but mostly for the intended audience of millennials and Gen Z. And the host will ask, you know, what advice would you have for them? The advice that I'd have for them is, is very similar to the advice I'd have for financial advisors. We're in a unique period of time right now through this COVID, this lockdown. This, it's a transformational part of our economy that we'll look back as a pivot point, much like we did September 11th. And what are you going to do with your time when you're in lockdown or you can't go in your, your office, you can't visit with clients? It's what you do in this downtime when you're facing adversity that will pay benefits years from now. So we could feel sorry for ourselves, hunker down, say I can't talk to my clients or they can't come in. Or you could do something to put yourself in scoring position on the other side of this. 
And so that's the advice I would have. Humbly, I, I would present that as use this time productively to, to make a difference for generations down the road. As I wrap up, I'm going to highlight something you just said. If you go into these conversations with dollar signs in your eyes, or if you go into any piece of marketing, content, or communication with those dollar signs in your eyes, if you're not coming at it from a true place, not your head, but your heart, if you're not coming from your heart, people are going to sniff it out, that you are not going to have the intended results or consequences, as Brian had said, you're going to come across the opposite of what you want to come across, which is to be helpful, caring, and truly sincere. Check those dollar signs at the door, even if you have to do a pregame warm-up uh, before you ever meet with a client to make sure that your focus is correct. One of the best pieces of advice I ever got uh, from a, a very professional financial advisor is, is the visualization of the outcome of the meeting. And that's what Brian's talking about there. This book can really help you make sure that you couch the conversation in the way that you need to, to open up this opportunity, but not just open it up as a business opportunity, uh, a larger opportunity to serve, which is what most of you want to do. Now, Brian, if somebody wants to get in touch with you or find out more about the book, where can they go? So they would go to the book's website, uh, which is just myname.com. So it's www.brianursu.com. Dot com And that's Brian with an I. And on there, you will have the access to listen to some of the other podcasts, this one for sure, again, and download the first four chapters of the book. I'd recommend any financial advisor download the first four chapters for free and read it. If you like the tone, it's my conversational tone. If you like that, if it resonates with you, you'll like the rest of the book. If it's too off-putting to you because it's not academic or it's more approachable, then you're probably not going to like the rest of the book. So, <laughs> and, and if you do keep it to yourself, because then <laughs> I will cry. Uh, but I think you'll like it, but that's where you would go. And then you can order it on, on that same website through Amazon, Barnes and Noble, or wherever you buy books. And Brian, we will make sure that we have links in the show notes for everybody to go ahead and do a quick click to purchase the book. If you are a financial services professional who needs to Look at things in a different way. If you notice that you're reading purely academic books, uh, market-focused books, there is a place for that within your practice. But the majority of you get up in the morning to have real conversations with the clients that you love to help them live their best life. And if there can be a tool that you can put in your toolbox that will help you help your client having an important conversation, then I think it's your professional duty to do so. Brian, thank you very much for taking some time and talking about your magnificent book, Now What? A Practical Guide to Figuring Out Your Financial Future. I appreciate you being on the show today, brother. All right. Thanks, Matt. It was great catching up with you again. Thanks for listening to the Top Advisor Marketing Podcast brought to you by Proudmouth. If you want to know more about how you can be your own loud, visit us at proudmouth.com and sign up for the Pod Rocket Academy. Through courses and office hours led by professional podcast producers and digital marketers, you will learn everything you need to know to become the trusted subject matter expert you were meant to be.